Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another battle to the death for you today. We have the Benchmade 560BK-1, otherwise affectionately known as the Super Freak, versus the Spyderco Shaman. You guys asked for this review a while ago, but I didn't have a Shaman at the time. Well, I went and bought one back again, so because I really missed having one around. So, your wish is my command. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this up. Now, both knives, very similar price. We have 191.25 for the Benchmade versus uh, the uh, 187.95 for the Spider Co. I actually had to go look at that again because uh, that price has changed a little bit. So yeah, previously this probably wouldn't have been a fair comparison because when the Shaman came out, it was like 150. Um, but now it's up almost the same price. So let's get some comparison stuff going on here. How does this work? Well, same as always. We do seven categories. We have design and aesthetics, quality, blade, ergonomics, carry, deployment, and value. And then we add those up at the end. Get one point for each category you win, and we pick a winner. And there is a clear winner in this. It's not going to be a tie. I know sometimes I've had ties and people get upset. Don't get upset. There is going to be a winner for sure. So, uh, yeah, like I said, the Shaman is uh, the largest of the native family. Just talk about each knife individually a little bit and, like, how they came about and all that. It is the largest of the, the native family, even though it doesn't have a native name on it, but Shaman's kind of a native sounding name, so I get why they chose that name. You've got right hand, left hand, tip up, tip down carry, uh, any way you want it. Uh, and it's it's been a very popular design with them, for sure. This is the standard version. I'm using this as the comparison because this one is widely available. Same with the, the Super Freak, that is widely available. I like to use the more widely available versions. There have been some uh, some uh, sprint runs that are probably a bit more compatible as far as steel and stuff goes, but you know, they're all gone. It, they come and go very, very quickly, and now they are ridiculous money on the secondary market. So it doesn't make any sense to really use those uh, for a comparison test like this. But I think both these knives still compare, uh, uh, compare pretty closely, as you will see as we get going. Um, the Super Freak, that's what we call it affectionately. It is just technically the Freak 560BK-1. The original Freak had an S30V blade and these uh, G10 with like a rubbery kind of insert uh, on the handles. I, I didn't care for those those handles at all. This is a very cool mill G10 with M4 steel, coated blade, but eh, we'll talk about that again. But it's a uh, very, very great knife. It's been very, very well received, and uh, I really, really like mine. I, I do carry it a whole lot. I like both these a whole lot. Like I said, I bought a Shaman back again. I had one, I sold it, and I went back and got another one. So, yeah, it, I, I like both of these a whole lot. And this is probably uh, one of my favorite Benchmades. So this is this one was a bit tough for me. But let's do some specs before we get too far. I'm not going to do any size comparisons because I'm size comparing them against each other. But uh, we have... On the Super Freak, we have an overall length of 8.5 inches, blade length of 3.6 inches. Line that up a little bit better. You have a blade thickness of just 0.11 inches and a handle thickness of 0.62 inches with a weight of 4.3 ounces. Now on to the Shaman. We have an overall length of 8 inches, a blade length of, again, 3.6 inches, blade thickness 0.15 inches, so significantly thicker, Handle thickness of 0 0.53 and a weight of 5.2 ounces. So a little bit heavier, almost a full ounce. Now, let's get going and get into the scorable categories. We start off with design and aesthetics. I always try to say this is the most subjective of the categories. We're going to switch these because the camera perspective makes is making the Super Freak look much smaller. But see, if you switch them, you can see it. It, it really is. They're very, very similar in, in overall size. Um, design and aesthetics. I will say uh, I really like the shape of the Shaman, and it does look much better in person than it does in pictures, I think. It, it doesn't do justice to how nicely curved the G10 is, and it is, it's a nice-looking knife. I, I like the look of the clip. I like that the lanyard hole goes through the, you know, goes through the clip like that. I, I like a lot about the way it looks, but even though I don't like coated blades normally, and I will say it makes the Super Freak look a bit more tactical than it needs to. Um, and I would much prefer it with an uncoated blade. Uh, I know Benchmade does it on almost all their non-stainless blades because I guess they don't trust us not to get rust spots and stuff on it. But I know what I'm doing. I coat it with EDCI and it's fine. But anyway, despite that, I got to give the one in design aesthetics to the Super Freak because these scales are just so nice. 
I mean, for a stock knife, these are some of the nicest G10 scales. A stock knife in this price range, uh, some of the nicest I've seen. I like the red standoffs. I like the little red accents. It's uh, it's it's just an awesome looking knife. It's a really really cool looking knife, even with the coated blade. It's still really super cool, and I I just really really like it. I I gotta give gotta give the win to the Super Freak as far as that goes. Now, quality. Um. This one is this one is tough for me because I, a lot a lot of you guys I complain about Benchmade quality control. I've been really really lucky. I've only had like one that had a minor issue, and I've I've never had any real issues. Um, but I I have enough anecdotal evidence to accept that it's a thing. Um, I think they're a lot better than they used to be. I by no means would be afraid to go buy a Benchmade or anything like that. But I know Omega Springs breaking knives coming off center, stuff like that, that happens. Um, it happens less often, less often than it does in Spyderco, especially this is a Golden Colorado USA made Spyderco. You know, I always have to specify that with Spyderco because they make them, they make knives all over the place. Uh, but yeah, I, I gotta say Spyderco just because I think, I think even just from the anecdotal evidence that I get, and even though I've had really good luck with Benchmade, if I was going to buy one just off the shelf, I would, I would probably feel, um, a bit better. About the spider Co. Um, now, as far as the blade goes, uh, this is a pretty easy, clear win for the Benchmade. I mean, for basically the same price, in terms of a few dollars difference, M4 steel versus S30V. Nothing wrong with S30V, don't get me wrong. But this is the higher end of the price range for S30V. This is the lower end of price range for M4, unless you're getting one of the Spyderco Sprint Runs and you actually happen to get one, you know, when they first come out on the, on the secondary market. But uh, also, much thicker blade stock, much thicker behind the edge. I believe this one has a custom edge on it, So, but I remember from uh, my old review, I believe it was uh, about 28, 30 thousandths behind the edge. This is like 21, 22, and it's a thinner blade stock, much slicier for my kind of use. Easy win for the Benchmade. If you're doing heavy, you're harder beating on stuff, uh, you might like that little bit more blade stock, but the S30V isn't as good as steel. It's not going to hold an edge as long as the M4 is. And M4, honestly, not that hard to sharpen. It is a very, very hard steel, but you take your time with it. I really haven't had that much of a problem with it. I prefer it to like S90V. I, I find it easier to sharpen than that, um, at least in my experience and with the tools that I have. But Gotta say, pretty easy win on the blade uh, to the Benchmade, even though it's coated. But the coating's really good. I do use this knife, and everybody I, every time I show it, people accuse me of not using it. But because the because the coating isn't all scuffed up. Well, Benchmade's coating's just pretty darn good, honestly. I mean, I, I there are some scuffs on it. The probably even going to show up in camera. There are a few small ones, but I mostly cut cardboard and stuff like that. I'm not like a heavy heavy user, and yeah, haven't scratched it up yet. So. I gotta gotta say that's uh that's pretty darn good. While we're talking about the blades on these two, by the way, you're gonna see this. That's not normally there. The first production run, obviously, this is the first production run, and that little number isn't usually there when you go buy a, a shaman. That's uh this is uh the previous owner, one of the previous owners was a in the collector's club, so that's a collector's club mark. So these do have some extra marks on the blade that aren't usually there. Um but yeah, blade super freak all day long, twice on Sunday. Uh, ergonomics. Uh, this one, this one is another one that's, that's pretty close between them. Um, because it's, they're both excellent. They're both just really, really good. Um, I have never had a complaint carry wise with the Super Freak at all. Um, it's very, very comfortable. Uh, zero complaints, but the Shaman is just that much better. Um, I like the way your hand, you can choke up a bit. I like that. And just the way the scales are contoured. Um, yeah, it, I gotta go Shaman on this. It, the, the only weakness that Shaman has is, yeah, the, my first one wasn't like this, but the second one, uh, there's, there's some, there's some, uh, rough, not roughness. It's a bit sharp here around the scales. I just got to take them off and hit them with some sandpaper and I haven't bothered to. Um, but it's still, even that, even that taken in, this is really, really good. This is about perfect for my hands, which are large size gloves, but skinny fingers. Um, yeah. And I love the jimping where it lands. Not there's anything wrong with that on this. It's nice on this too, but I don't know. Maybe it's just that forward choil, that forward like 50-50 choil. I don't know. I, it's, it's, uh, I, I gotta go, gotta go shaman. They're both really good though, but 
Gotta go Shaman for Ergonomics. Carry. Now this one may surprise you because the Shaman is almost an ounce heavier. Uh, I'm using the stock clip. I put it back on for this review on the Super Freak. Um, I usually use it with a uh, carbonized uh, deep carry clip from Benchmade uh, that they were nice enough to send me back when they were still free. Now they're still they're still really cheap. They're like five bucks. Um, but with the stock clip, this is a heavier knife, but uh, it carries smaller. It's a heavier knife. It's it's a bigger knife as far as you know this dimension goes, but it carries smaller. It feels smaller in my pocket. It's easier to get my hand by. Now with the $5, you know, pocket clip, this is the one that I, I got from them. This is the, the carbonized, whatever they call it, um, Benchmade clip. Uh, they used to be free. Like I said, now they're five bucks and, a, and you got to wait a, two or three weeks. But um, it, I still just find this feels smaller, even though it's bigger and heavier. And when I'm reaching in my pocket to get something out past it, it feels smaller. So Carrie, I'm gonna actually going to give it to the Shaman. Uh, deployment. Um, normally I call an access lock and a, uh, and a compression lock, the two locks these are using, uh, pretty even. Um, not in this case. Uh, in this case, I, I have to say the bench made because on the Shaman, I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me. But the one complaint everybody had about the Shaman initially is when you close the compression lock, if you don't get your finger out of the way, here, I'm going to do it like this so you can see. Uh, that little tab enters the path of, of the blade. So when you go to close it, it does that. It doesn't close all the way because that little tab hits your finger. It doesn't hurt or anything. It just stops it from you know, dropping shut like a compression lock normally would. Uh, so you either have to put your finger up front like I usually do or just time it right and get it out of the way. So... Um, but as far as snapping them out, they're both pretty equal as far as that goes. You can use the thumb stud on this, the thumb hole on, this, on the Spider Co. You can, you know, open it with the compression lock still. You can still get your finger in to do that, you know, like you can with any other. Um, uh, yeah, I, I got to give the win uh, to the Benchmade just because of that. That thing getting in the path, that's something you have to get used to. There's nothing you have to get used to on this. If you've ever held a Benchmade for five minutes, it, this just acts like a Benchmade. So pretty easy one on the deployment to, to the Benchmade, even though they're both pretty good, but yeah, it's just a little thing. It, it is kind of annoying. All right. Value. Um, this is what I call the most important category. And I think this is a pretty, pretty easy win for the super freak, right? I mean, it's M4 steel and that you, you don't find that in knives this price a whole lot. Like I said, except for some of the spider coast sprint runs. Um, if you're, one of the few people who stays up till four in the morning to get them when they first come out. Um, that's not true. They never release them at four in the morning. If you, if you, if you sit at lunch at noon and get them out, whatever, um, M4 steel versus S30 V other than that, pretty similar. Th these scales look like someone put a lot more work into them and you know, they're pretty much the same price. Now, when this was 150, I, I probably would have picked this, but when the spider apocalypse happened or a year and a bit ago, and they jacked up a lot of their prices. I don't know why the Shaman took such a hit, but everything else went up 10 or 15%. This went up like, I think it was 30, like 30%, something like that. Or went up 30 bucks. It went up like 30 some, 30 some dollars. It, that's, that's crazy. Um, I still think it, the current price of what, 188. I don't feel ripped off if I had to pay that for it, but um, it's not a value at all. Um, and it's arguable whether or not it's even worth that. We're never felt that way in the Super Freak. Neither Benchmade nor Spider Core are known for being value masters. Uh, both of them, you you pay extra. Both of them have, have some knives that are egregiously overpriced. Um, but this is, the Shaman happens to be kind of the poster child for that, where the Super Freak is one of the, the rare Benchmades that I think is actually really a bargain. Um, 191.25 for M4 steel. You can get it all the time. It's full production. Um, it looks great. Uh, yeah, the yeah, value, super freak, all day long. So where does that leave us? Four to three for the Benchmade super freak. Um, and and I will stand by that. I I really like them both. Like I said, I just bought the Shaman back. I'm not going to get rid of it again. 
I've had this for a very long time, uh, since right, right when they came out and obviously it's a first, you know, the first production run. Um, no intentions on getting rid of either of them, even though they're both very similar in purpose. Uh, but I like this more for an EDC, but yeah, if I'm doing really super heavy duty stuff, I'll grab the Shaman. Th this is kind of a beater for me. Uh, that's, that's kind of the way that I, I made a good trade for it. I don't have a lot of money into it, so I'm just going to beat on it. Uh, but yeah, I, that's, that's where I go. I still say if you're just going to buy one or the other, um, yeah, get the Super Freak or the 560BK-1 if you want to be particular about it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.